Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, I'm Murli, and um, I'm going to be talking about data product management today. So here's a uh, rough agenda for today. Um, <clears throat> we'll talk about uh, what a data product is, um, who is a data PM, uh, and uh, what does a data PM do. Then, then we'll get into uh, different facets or aspects of uh, data product management. Um, and then we'll talk about where you can get started in your journey, and um, we'll wrap it up with uh, <clears throat> pitfalls in my journey uh, as a data PM. Uh, so I, I grew up in India, uh, have been living in Los Angeles for the last 10 years. Um, I live with uh, my wife and uh, two kids, two daughters, uh, six and one. Um, <clears throat> a fun time to be a, uh, uh, a parent. Uh, during the during the COVID break, if you will, um, <clears throat> uh, I used to play a lot of racquetball uh, before uh, before the pandemic. But unfortunately, these days I'm not able to, like everybody else is. So I'm looking at uh, Supernatural uh, VR. Uh, they have a bunch of games on their uh, platform. I hope they release racquetball as a sport. Uh, looking forward to it, and. Um, <clears throat> This has been my uh, uh, professional journey uh, for the last uh, 10 years, if you will. Um, I started out as a uh, business technology analyst at uh, Deloitte, right out of college from Duke. Um, been there for around five years uh, before, I, before I got into uh, building data products for uh, Seven Lakes and Disco. Uh, now I'm, at, I'm currently at Tinder as a group or a product manager for uh, data and platform teams. So uh, <clears throat> let's start with what is a data product. So um, according to DJ Patel, um, who was the chief data scientist uh, for uh, US government, uh, data uh, for a data product, data is a primary facilitator to reach the end goal. Uh, and it's not just a means to an end. Uh, so this is a loaded statement, but uh, let's cover some examples. Um, a lot of people, uh, feel that uh, Amazon is a data product, uh, but I would say Amazon is not, right? But the search engine that you have in Amazon where you're searching for your uh, products, that's definitely a data product. Okay. Um, moving on, um, Tinder is, uh, is not a data product as well. Tinder is a uh, dating app, but the, uh, recommendations engine that runs in the background um, to show you uh, to show members profiles of others that definitely is a data product so i think you get a hang of it right so um it, let's take a uh, example where we're talking about data product directly right so google analytics for example it's definitely a data product because um, what you're uh, showing the end user is uh, data and information and insights that are captured from data so it's definitely a uh, uh, data product. So when talking about data products, there's uh, different kinds and types of data products. There's uh, raw data, there's uh, transformed or aggregated data, uh, there's algorithms, there's uh, insights, and there's uh, alerts and monitoring uh, automated uh, actions. So depending on the type of uh, product you're building, your, um, your strategy and your approach um, varies and changes. Um, so let's say um, <clears throat> you are being, as a data product manager, you are being requested um, for raw data for a uh, machine learning model. And uh, you got to then figure out um, what type of uh, product you're building, right? So. For this use case, uh, you're going to be looking at um, uh, delivering raw data, and you're going to be delivering as is uh, because the machine learning team is going to pick up the raw data as is, and uh, they're going to work with uh, cleansing the data, um, creating rollups or uh, creating aggregates or uh, transformations as needed for their model, and they're going to use it on the on their model, right? So, um, so this is one end of the spectrum, I would say, uh, raw data as is. The other end of the spectrum is, uh, let's say, uh, a performance marketing team which has which is running a campaign. Uh, they would want to know how the campaign performed after um, after the campaign went live. So they would want insights from the campaign, and they would want it in the format of a um, sophisticated dashboard um, with visuals and stuff, right? 
So in that um, in that example, uh, the data product that you're delivering is uh, insights um, on a dashboard, right? So depending on um, where you are on the spectrum, um, you're probably working with uh, a different set of tools uh, to build these uh, data products, right? Um, so, I mean, sometimes while working with data products, you're dealing with technical uh, users, like the machine learning engineers. And uh, on the other end, you're working with uh, business users, like the performance marketing team. So, uh, who is a data product manager? I mean, there's uh, a bunch of definitions out there for uh, data PMs. Um, but in my opinion, um, I feel a data product manager's role is very similar to a... Uh, traditional PM. Uh, the only difference I see is um, uh, traditional PMs uh, use data as uh, uh, raw material, while a data PM uses uh, data as a product. I mean, not just uses, uh, treats things uh, about data as a product. Uh, moving on, <clears throat> what does a data PM do? Um, data PMs typically tend to work with uh, data teams and uh, depending on the size of the uh, organization that you're working with or depending on the maturity of uh, the organization um, within their uh, data evolution, um, you might be working with, uh, as a data PM, you might be working with uh, one or more of these teams. And by no means, this is an exhaustive list of all the data teams. This is a uh, sampling, if you will, right? So you'll be working with, uh, let's say, data engineering, uh, data analytics, data science, machine learning, experimentation teams, um, at the least. Um, and in my opinion, um, I would look at data PM as a uh, quarterback for all these data teams. Um, so the reason I say quarterback is uh, you, you got a field request from uh, product teams, business teams, uh, user-facing application, and other consumer teams, um, and um, distill those requests into a prioritized list of uh, initiatives for the data teams. And um, once you get to the prioritization, then you got to break it down into uh, uh, sizable chunks for each of the teams and uh, create sequenc uh, sequencing between uh, these tasks, uh, create dependencies. Obviously, uh, one team's output is probably going to be input for the other team. Um, and um, also ensure end-to-end uh, -end, uh, orchestration from uh, uh, delivering the product back to uh, these product teams uh, or these, these consumer teams. And uh, what do the consumer teams use this uh, data for, right? or uh, use a data product for. Uh, in some cases, they use it for uh, making uh, data-informed decisions. Uh, think of uh, the dashboard example for performance marketing um, in the previous case. Or in some cases, they might be using that for uh, data-powered product building. Uh, think of the machine learning uh, <laughs> data product use case uh, where uh, the machine learning algorithm could actually power the recommendations engine or search engine uh, that that is being developed uh, for the product, right? Yeah. So uh, again, depending on uh, the kind of uh, the organization and um, the maturity of the organization, uh, it could be one data PM versus a uh, data PM org. There could be multiple uh, data PMs uh, in the middle layer here. And... Um, uh, they could be catered towards uh, specific uh, data teams, if you will. Um, <clears throat> this slide, I'm going to talk about uh, different uh, aspects or facets of uh, product management. Um, over the course of um, my career, working with uh, data teams, um, one thing I have learned is um, there's different, um, uh, these are different fac facets, the most important ones that, uh, that are needed for data product management. Um, so as a data PM, um, just being data driven is uh, not enough, in my opinion. Um, you need to uh, enable a culture of being data informed uh, within the organization that you're working with. 
uh, that means uh, taking the aspect of data management out of the hands of uh, individual contributors or uh, the data teams that you're working with and um, uh, ensuring that the data sets are centralized um, and uh, ensuring that everybody's working towards a common goal of uh, uh, ensuring data quality is to the highest standards, if you will. Um, so these are some aspects. Uh, <clears throat> along with that, um, as, a, as a data PM, um, I mean, for data product management to succeed, uh, you need to uh, ensure that data strategy is in line um, uh, with uh, plans for collecting, gen I mean, generating data, collecting data, and uh, data consumption. Uh, ensure that um, there is uh, required tooling uh, to support the data products uh, from an infrastructure perspective. Uh, you also need to think about the data delivery mechanisms. Um, so in the example that we looked at uh, raw data versus uh, uh, <clears throat> versus the uh, dashboard that we delivered for performance marketing, um, the the data needs uh, or the data delivery mechanism for as these versus uh, dashboards. So along with that, you also need to look at uh, what kind of data is being requested, how frequently it is being requested, um, and is there any uh, latency needs that you need to capture in terms of SLAs and stuff. So that's going to be very important while working with uh, uh, data teams or actually consumer teams. And uh, you also need to ensure that uh, the, the quality of data is being um, uh, monitored. Um, so from a uh, data accuracy perspective, data consistency perspective, uh, data trustworthiness perspective, you need to have some uh, key performance indicators to measure data quality. And uh, you need to keep monitoring uh, those metrics uh, all through. Uh, <clears throat> all through. Um, and then, there's data privacy and security, right? So um, we talk about collecting data. So ensuring um, the data that is being collected, um, if there is uh, personal information um, of, of the members, uh, you need to ensure uh, the data is getting encrypted. Um, and you also need to ensure uh, it, the retention policies on those data, um, on those data elements are uh, being uh, applied and uh, ensure that data is compliant with uh, regulations like uh, GDPR and CCPA. <clears throat> and um, with GDPR and CCPA, we have seen uh, people have the ability to request for uh, their data not to be shared with third party organizations and uh, they have the ability to uh, ask for data to be deleted, right? So without uh, a good pr data privacy and uh, uh, a security uh, aspect, within your data product management strategy, you'll not be able to do that. Um, and the next aspect is data governance. So the policies and procedures that we have been talking about in terms of um, ensuring uh, data quality, ensuring uh, privacy and compliance uh, are gonna be set forth with uh, your data governance uh, committees, um, which, which creates uh, <clears throat> a framework for policies and procedures. And the next aspect is uh, data lake and data warehouse. Um, so this is this is where you talk about um, where is my data being stored, uh, how it is being accessed, uh, is it being accessible, right? And uh, who maintains the uh, the derived data? Um, is it um, the the strategy for derived data? Is it centralized? Um, is the transformation is are all the transformations that happen that, that are happening in the data world being uh, registered somewhere? Uh, what is the query engine? Uh, so all of those aspects are uh, part of the data lake, uh, data lake and data warehouse um, facet, if you will. And then there is uh, data science analytics in terms of uh, how is this be how is how is this data being accessed? Um, are there needs for um, self serve capabilities, and um, how are consumers um, trying to um, um, read the data and use the data. So you might say uh, this is a lot. Um, obviously, this is a lot. Um, if you look at the data and AI landscape for 2020, uh, this is a list of all the data products that are out there, right? And uh, one might um, one might get one might get. Um, uh, 
appalled uh, in terms of uh, way to get started with all of this, uh, especially if you're uh, at the start of uh, uh, your uh, career journey, right? So uh, you, you might say, Morley, all of this is fine. <laughs> where can I get started, right? So where you can get started is um, obviously you need to understand all of uh, the above assets um, as you grow uh, in this career. But for you to start, uh, I would say the basic thing to know is um, understanding the data flow. Uh, so when, when I say data flow, um, how, how the data is being captured, how is it being collected, if you will, uh, and uh, how is it being processed? Uh, where do you store the data? Uh, how do people analyze the data? And uh, what are the different uh, use cases for the data, right? Uh, in terms from a consumer perspective. So if you under, if you try to understand the flow of data, uh, that's gonna um, that's gonna cover most of the facets that we have seen uh, in the previous slide. So for anybody starting the journey, uh, my my first ask would be understand the flow of data. And um, <clears throat> to understand the data flow, um, depending on uh, the type of um, uh, data infrastructure and data tooling you have, I mean, the data pipeline you have, uh, there's, there's different, um, <clears throat> I mean, if you go to GCP, GCP has Google Cloud Platform, it has a different uh, set of tools for the pipeline. Uh, Amazon or AWS has a different set of tools for the pipeline, Azure has a different set of tools. Uh, but once you understand uh, the data pipeline and the underlying aspects, uh, that's going to be a good starting point. So this is, um, I'm, I'm going to call out um, uh, Priyanka Vergaria, uh, who actually created this um, for <clears throat> on the Cloud Girl uh, blog. Uh, this is a good representation, uh, but I mean, depending on where you are or where your company uh, is uh, in their uh, data journey, um, you might or might not have all of these tools. And depending on the type of um, um, cloud architecture that has been uh, installed, uh, you might have a different set of tools um, in your scenarios. This is just an example. So um, what are the skills that you need to use or acquire? Um, <clears throat> I felt that um, any data product management, I mean, any product management talk in general needs to have a uh, Venn diagram. And I did not want to go without a Venn diagram. So <laughs> there you go. This is the Venn diagram for data product management. Um, as a data PM, these are the skills that you need to use or acquire. Uh, one is data fluency. Um, <clears throat> data fluency talks about, uh, do you understand uh, the language that the data team speak, right? Uh, speaking the data language. Uh, do you have uh, proficiency um, with SQL or uh, dashboarding skills? <clears throat> and what's the, what's the level of your proficiency, right? Uh, do you understand or, or do you are you familiar with uh, ML and AI and uh, how businesses use ML and AI uh, to build data products? Uh, so that's the aspect of data fluency that you need to be uh, familiar with or acquire uh, to succeed in this role. The other aspect, um, I, I believe, is uh, buy-in and uh, alignment. Uh, so, <clears throat> like, I, like I showed in one of the slides, uh, a data PM works with uh, multiple data teams in a cross-functional setting. So, uh, stakeholder management um, in, in a cross-functional team setting is something uh, you got to do day in and day out in this role. Um, at the same time, you're also working with multiple consumers, the consumer teams um, in uh, accommodating their requests uh, while working with the data teams. So um, stakeholder management is going to be uh, the name of the game. And uh, you need to get a buy-in from all the data teams and you need to ensure that all the data teams are aligned in uh, building their data products. So that this also comes with um, uh, a need for very high EQ. Um, the reason I say that is um, on most of the data teams that you're working with, you're working with um, uh, subject matter experts with deep technical expertise in what they're doing, uh, whether it's uh, data streaming or whether it's um, um, <clears throat> analytics engineering or uh, uh, people who are ingesting the data. You're working with uh, SMEs, uh, 
of the highest quality uh, with deep technical expertise. So uh, obviously as a PM, um, you do not have the same level of technical depth as uh, some of the teams that you're working with. So having a high EQ uh, definitely helps um, in, in uh, dealing with situations like that. The next aspect is uh, ensuring that uh, you as a data PM or uh, you as a le leader of the data org um, are able to build uh, trust in the data and uh, you're able to drive ad adoption of uh, data tools uh, with, within your teams and uh, you're able to empower users um, by providing them uh, let's say self-serve capabilities. So depending on the data maturity, uh, I would say these three aspects of uh, <clears throat> building trust, driving adoption and, and empowering users is um, what you need to focus on uh, in this role. Um, and obviously you're, you're, you're gonna collaborate with uh, all the data teams in ensuring these three steps are um, being followed from, a, uh, uh, from getting a data maturity uh, perspective. Lastly, I want to cover some uh, pitfalls in my journey as a data PM. Um, <clears throat> I mean, everybody talks about uh, success stories, but um, I want to talk about my pitfalls, uh, primarily because uh, success for one team doesn't necessarily translate to a success uh, for other teams uh, or other situations. But uh, once you know the pitfalls, once you know the mistakes, uh, you can easily avoid the mistakes. Um, so, at the start of my career, um, at the way I was approaching um, uh, solving for problems was um, along with understanding the problem um, uh, from the from the consumer. Uh, I also uh, listened to a lot of solutions they were providing, um, which is which is not a good practice uh, because once you go with the solution mindset. Um, you start for uh, solving the problem with the solution mindset. So what I would uh, ask each of you to do is um, ask your stakeholders for problems and uh, not solutions. If they are giving you solutions, you can listen to them. Uh, but the decision on uh, what path to choose to solve the problem needs to come uh, from working with the data teams. Um, and once you once you know all the problems, uh, go to the root cause of the problem. Understand. Um, I mean, at, at the surface of it, it might seem a different problem, uh, but once you go to the root cause, um, it could be a totally different uh, ball game, right? Um, the, the reason you need to go to the root cause is uh, multiple problems uh, different stakeholders are talking about might translate to one root cause. So if you solve for one root cause, uh, you, you will be able to um, solve for multiple team, multiple stakeholders at the same time. So ensure that uh, uh, this is something you uh, you do uh, and you practice. Uh, the other thing that uh, I, I did as a mistake was uh, I was engaging with uh, too many vendors. Um, so given a problem, um, I was trying to look for uh, vendors or tools which solve for the problem. And I would engage with them, I would get into um, I would get, get into demos uh, to understand uh, what uh, what their product offers. Uh, while all of that is not bad, um, if you're engaging with too many vendors, um, you're dedicating a lot of your time to uh, understand um, what different tools offer. Um, I mean, going to product demos and uh, listening to uh, how it how this tool has solved for other companies is is um, well all of that sounds good it takes a lot of takes up a lot of your time so the way uh, i started approaching that now is um, i'm collecting feedback from cross functional teams uh, on their pain points and uh, once i collect a lot of these pain points uh, i'm going the other way around uh, looking at um, are there vendors out there uh, which can solve for multiple pain points that we have internal to the organization, right? Uh, rather than uh, coming the other way around, uh, uh, hey, I have attended this uh, vendor uh, seminar or webinar or demo, and uh, they solve for X, Y, Z. Uh, rather than doing that, uh, ABC are the problems that we have, and 
I have attended uh, two webinars for two different vendors. Uh, one vendor solves for AB, while the other vendor solves for ABC, right? So if you go that the other way around, um, you, you, you're gonna save time for you, for yourself and for your teams. <clears throat> and the third problem, uh, or the pitfall that I had in my journey was uh, being an early adopter. Um, so this is trying to um, get uh, be a, uh, uh, this is trying, trying to adapt uh, methodologies or processes or tools um, that are not uh, tested well, as in they have been uh, implemented at, uh, let's say, a few uh, uh, customer client locations, but um, they, they haven't been uh, tried and tested uh, at a large scale, right? So if you are to go and become an early adapter for a new tool or process or methodology, uh, ensure that uh, everybody that you're working with is on board with that idea, um, uh, e even before you uh, get it incorporated into your data ecosystem. Uh, so, I mean, these are not all of the pitfalls I had. There's uh, many more. Um, I, I know I can, cannot cover all of those today. But do reach out to me if you want to talk uh, more on any of these, um, and uh, I'll be happy to share uh, some more. So if there's anything that um, uh, I want you guys to take away from today's uh, meeting is um, understand the flow of data. Uh, this is going to be very important for you to uh, <clears throat> um, for you to build up on your uh, data PM experience. Uh, know your consumers better. So uh, data is a two-sided marketplace, right? So there's um, producers and consumers, right? Um, so be in touch with your producers and consumers, um, cater to their needs, uh, and uh, know your consumers better and uh, be in touch with, uh, touch with them all the time. And keep them up to date uh, with communications on what's going on with the data strategy and uh, data teams in general. And the third one, and the most important one, is uh, build upon your EQ. Um, this is going to be uh, very important uh, because in a cross-functional setting um, where you're not the subject matter expert, you, you've got to rely on experts for, um, for, for meeting the objectives for the company. And uh, EQ is going to come in handy. It's going to help, um, help you do that in a cross-functional setting. Um, and uh, a last quote from uh, the CEO of Spotify on this, on EQ, is um, be kind uh, and understand that everybody is on their own journey. <clears throat> That's all I had for today. Uh, thanks for attending the webinar. And um, if you want to uh, follow up with any questions, um, that's my email. And uh, you can also reach out to me on LinkedIn. Thanks a lot.